Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to talk about how to build a custom date picker. So you can either click the button or double click the date field or whatever you want to do. You'll get your own little date picker. You can have little buttons on it to add a day, add a week, add a month, all those kind of little add up or subtract the things, right? You hit OK and it puts the value back where you came from. We're going to talk about that in today's video. Today's question comes from Madeline in Elk Grove Village, Illinois, one of my Platinum members. And I actually bumped this up the list a little bit because one of my moderators and friends, Sammy, has been working with an issue close to this, so I figured I'd put together a little database for it. But Madeline says, I'd like to make my own little buttons to add days, weeks, or months to date fields, but I don't want to have to do this for every single date field in my database. Is there a way that I can make my own custom date pop-up picker where I can just attach this to a date field and then return the value. Well, sure, Madeline. And in fact, if you know the technique that I used in my custom message box video, this guy, where we made a custom message box, right? You can click yes, no, or whatever buttons you want. We can use a dialog form to return a value. And you can use the same thing for a date picker or any kind of pop-up that you want. So before we get into it, this is a developer level video. What does that mean? Well, that means we're going to be using some VBA. So if you've never done any VBA programming and access before and you want to learn, go watch this video. It's about 20 minutes long. It teaches you everything you need to know to get started. Make sure you know how to use if then statements. We're going to create our own function to return a value. So make sure you know how to build your own function. And make sure you've watched my tempvars video unless you're Adam, in which case you probably haven't watched it yet. But these are all free videos. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch those and then come on back. Okay, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. Oops, this is a free database. You can grab a copy of it off my website if you'd like to. And let's say I got a bunch of different uh, dates in here. Here's a date field right there. Let's say the customer's got a date field here. Uh, we got date fields on our order form. We got date fields all over the place and I want to be able to have my own custom set of controls. So instead of this boring little pop up here, right, I would like to make my own. That is a little pop up form and I can have little buttons to add a day, add a week, add a quarter, add a year, you know, add four, whatever. All right. You don't want to work with this. You want to make your own. I get it. So let's see how we can do that. Let's start by putting together our own little date pop up form. So let's make I'm going to copy my single F that I have here. It's just a blank single form. Copy, paste, control C, control V. We'll call this the date picker F. The date picker form. Where are you? Right there. Let's go to design view. We can get rid of that ID right there. And we'll make this our date value. So we'll just put in here date like that. Okay. And we'll slide it up a little bit. Maybe move it over a little bit like this. Maybe set the format if you want to. Well, let's give it a name too first here. What do you want to call this thing? Let's just call it my date, right? And the format will be short date. I like the ISO date format. I am on a mission to change the world to this date format, year, month, day. It's the one that makes the most sense and there's no ambiguity between it. Watch this video for details. After I get the world changed to this, I'm going to work on the 28 day month, but that's a whole other story. And since I have windows set to the ISO date format, my short date should come in in that format in my access database. All right, let's make this a little bit smaller like so. Let's get rid of all the stuff we don't need because right now if we save this and take a look at it in form view, we got navigation buttons, record selectors, all this stuff. Let's get rid of all the stuff we don't need. So let's go to format. Let's click on the form properties here. Go to format, turn off the record selectors, navigation buttons, scroll bars. Now I'm going to turn off the control box and the close button because I'm going to put my own OK button here that the user is going to click on and that will close the form and do some stuff including returning the value. I don't want them to hit the X up here. All right. Yeah, I know they can still hit control F4, but a most users don't know that. And B, yeah, we could intercept that key keyboard thing if we wanted to that key press if we wanted to. But for now, let's not worry about that. All right. So let's now put a button on here. All right. Form design, grab a button. We'll put it right down here. That'll be my OK button. We're going to cancel the wizard because the wizard doesn't do this. So hit OK. Just put OK there. All right. Now, here's where you can put all the other little controls that you want. OK, let's um, let's start this date value off here with a default value of equals date. So it'll put today's date in that box to start with. 
but then we can make other little buttons to change it. I like stuff like this. Watch this. Copy paste. Let's put a little button right there. Come here. There you go. We'll put in here plus one D like that. That'll be plus one day. Make it nice and tiny. Okay. Now give this button a name. All right. Let's call it plus one D like that. And then we'll right click build event. And there's my code builder, right? And here we'll say in it, my date equals my date plus one. Remember in date math and access, one equals one day. You want to add an hour, you can add 124th or use the date add function, right? And you can do the same thing for minus a day, plus a week, plus three days, plus a month, whatever. You can put all kinds of buttons in here that you want, whatever buttons you like, line them up, right? So when you're all done, you got something that looks like this, right? We'll center it over here where we want it. And now we can hit the plus one day, right? Hit minus a day, plus a week, whatever. All right, all these buttons, you get it. I've done other videos on how to do these before. In fact, here's the video for it. And you could take this guy, right? This form that I made here and make this the pop-up that we're doing today if you want. Look at all those different buttons, right? And you can even pick what, you know, what kind you want, month, year, whatever, okay? Okay, so. The user can go and change the date, whatever you want in here. In fact, you can even use the little this little guy too if you want to. There's nothing stopping you from doing that, right? Leave, leave that on there too. More options, the better, right? Okay, so what's this OK button going to do? Okay, now the form has to return the value that's in that my date box to whoever called it, okay? Now, the easiest way to do that is to use temp bars. We're going to set temp bar in here to that date. And then whoever called that form can just read that temp bar because forms by themselves don't really return values. But this is kind of a cheat to do that. We'll, just, we'll make the form act like a function, right? So go to design view and inside this OK button, which it's command for, so let's call this the OK button. OK button, there we go. Right click, build event. All right, so in here, we're gonna make a temp bar. So temp bars, what do you wanna call it? Let's call it date picker value equals whatever is in my date there, right? Now you gotta say my date dot value because if you don't put the dot value, it's gonna try to assign the object my date to the temp bar and temp bars can't hold objects only values. Just saving you an error message there. All right, enter. Now after that, we've grabbed the value. Now we have to close the form, okay? Because when we open the form in a minute, we're gonna open it as a dialog form and that's gonna stop everything else from happening until this form is closed. So do command dot close. AC form, me.name, that just saves you a step from having to put the actual name of the form in there, comma, and then we're going to put AC save yes. There's a long story behind that. I'm not going to go over it again. I've covered it in about 15 videos. Okay. If you're curious, post a comment. <laughs> save this. Close it. Close it. Now, when you open up this form and hit OK, it closes it and it saves that value in a temp bar. Now, all we got to do is open that form and then read the temp bar when it closes, okay? Oh, and by the way, one other trick if you want while well, you got this thing open here, if you wanna make this the default button, right click, design view, open up its properties, go to other, set default to yes. When the user presses the enter key, it'll push that button. All right, there's a video on that one. And hint, yes, we can add a cancel button here if you want to, we'll do that in the extended cut. All right, so close that, save it. Now we've got our form built where we can put a date in here and little buttons to do whatever we want. Hit OK, now the value saved in a temp bar. Now all we have to do is make a custom function to get that value from the form when it closes and put it in whatever field we want to. And we will do that in part two tomorrow. So tune in tomorrow, same bad time, same bad channel. Or if you remember, you can watch it right now because I'm going to record it in just a few minutes. But that's going to be your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. 
Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the video's up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90-minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. 
In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.